Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. We have just won the Nodum and have now have a Zilla army with which to liberate Doma. Oh, yeah. Get ourselves a fancy new hat. So yeah, we have a mount speed increase. Nice. Of course, we can't fly yet because we have Aether Current Quest. We still have yet to do. But that's alright. Can certainly do with faster mount speed. I just want to see if you're okay. Yeah, I think she knows we were, were victorious. Now her granddaughter's right here, you know. So maybe I did have a Super Saiyan glow, but it's only from a distance? Maybe? I don't know. Aw, so all the mall are cool. Alright. So that's good. Everyone's accounted for. Now, so now instead of rallying them, I have to make sure they're they're a okay. I can do that. Should have talked to me and Gosetsu while they were right here and. At least right around the corner there. Whoops. Yeah, I'll show you the victory pose in just a moment, but... Dialogue and stuff. All right, so where are my emotes? Uh... Where is my victory pose? Uh... Thought it was right next to battle stance, but apparently it's not. Probably looking right at it. Okay, so it was right next to battle stance. It just says victory, not victory stance. <sighs> that was embarrassing. Should not be swinging around a sword of this size around younglings. Especially injured and probably exhausted. You guys all right over here? Like, we could have another feast, just, just please don't make me, like, quest for it again. Don't want to go picking up more poop. Aww. Is 
So how are the other tri tribes of the steppe gonna feel about this thing? Cause not everyone competes in the Nadam, but like, the ones that don't, imagine hearing about this, like, the new Han is... Frickin' Eorzean? What's an Eorzean, you know? Oh. How oh, very sweet. It would mean a lot more if, you know, we found out, you know, music was an important part of their culture or how they revere their gods or something. But just seems it comes a little out of nowhere. Not entirely unwelcome because it, it's it's just more of a, a, a gameplay reward than anything. But group hug. Everybody, group hug. Come on. Okay, so at least they are familiar with the Empire, at least to some extent. Oh, do we have to? So they just accept that it's just part of their life cycle and whatnot. All right, I can deal with that. So thankfully, thankfully we can just teleport there and we don't have to walk. Glad for that. And this time, we're not going to have trouble finding the front door. No, I didn't mean to talk to you. Yeah, okay, you reluctantly think we're, you know, believe we're allies, even though, you know, I have girly bits on me. Oh, no, no, we're in charge now. You will listen. My thoughts exactly, at least. But, but law of the step, you jerk. Kind of sucks for him. He was he was far less of a jerk. Well, if that's what the rules say, then that's what the rules say. See, you even get to keep your cushy home.
Okay, apparently Lise just told a funny. Oh lord. Yeah, I'm with you, Elise. He, he's, he's really starting to creep me out right about now. I love the way- I just love the way she bows. There's something just really adorable about it. So, yeah. Magni is a bit salty that he don't got no lady. And it is- it was my impression when this, this, this time we're gonna take the elevator down before we run. It, I was more under the impression when I very first played this, and, and granted, some of this was just not properly paying attention to to dialogue. That he was under the impression that he believed, you know, he was like an actual incarnation of Azim. That's that's not quite what it is, but. Um, just the way he speaks and, and carries himself, especially with that line. And it turns out, you know, the, the description he used for, you know, his Nama is not really who his girl is fated to be, but rather what he wants to see. Like, ba basically his... his own personal image of what his perfect wife would be and I was better not off not reading that tale because it just makes him all the more just completely pathetic and and there, there there's a reason he wants these particular traits in a in in you know the woman of his dreams and whatnot and and they kind of make sense you know like you meet women you don't like and it's like well my perfect woman you know won't be you know like this and whatnot, so that that kind of part is natural. But what he fails to grasp is that the woman of his dreams is not just gonna show up and just drop right into his lap. He should have known that by the time, you know, of the story they told, which again is, is retold in this tale that I should link in the description. That he, he gathered up all the women of the steppe, say Sadu, who was not having any of his garbage, to, to, to find his one true love, and he doesn't find it. So how the hell was he, was he gonna find it in Serena? Because wouldn't she be ordered to show up there and whatnot? And he just can't absolutely grasp at all that relationships take work. Like, it's not just going to happen, and it may not just happen the way he wants it to happen. Um, it will later be also revealed that, thankfully, he, the one redeeming thing is he takes rejection pretty okay, because he's also under the belief that, you know, his one true love will never refuse him. So, if she says she's not it, then she's not it, and he accepts that, even if he is brokenhearted and salty in the moment about it, so... I guess I can give him partial credit for that, but it just really just makes him just utterly pathetic that he's he's this great warrior who, you know, rose up against the ranks and, you know, is, you know, honored as, as the best of the best of the Orineer and everything, and he's just sitting there just watching all his friends and his, bro his, his, his brothers, you know, all quote unquote marry and happily ever after, and he's just sitting there and he just can't grasp why because he's an idiot. He's an arrogant idiot. Aw, oh, so they lost some of theirs. Sorry about that.
So apparently Gesser knocked up his woman before he died. Cool. So I kind of like how the two of them, you know, despite their their bit of a rocky start, you know, she she does come to regard him as is a great warrior, and she doesn't seem to really bear ill will against him for you know accidentally insulting, her, you know, her tribe's beliefs and whatnot. And I really kind of respect that. Like, like, she is just so much of a better character because she's she's aware of her shortcomings, you know. She, she can learn to, you know, change her mind and, you know, come to understandings and Magna I just doesn't. I do not understand why he is so beloved among such of the fandom. Like, if, if he was just more of, like, a comic relief idiot oaf, I could understand, but he's such an arrogant dickhead. Yeah, so you have personal attachment to this place. See, even Gosetsu has come around to her. See? She's probably one of the best things about this place. Okay, so apparently she got here five minutes before we did, somehow, and fixed this, and then buggered off. Unless she can do it from afar, maybe? I mean, she seems to be very powerful. Another one? Hopefully you can keep those Ornir jerks in line, at least until the next Nodum. Although is there a rule that they have to defend their title, or can they just not fight if their gods don't wish it? Like, is there a hard rule about that? I mean, they only fought in the Nodum because their gods wanted them to, so... It's not like they really care about... ...being in charge, you know? So yeah, we got a banner. Here's more stuff to decorate our house with. See, that I think is a more symbolic gift that she should have given us the first time. Yeah, can we go home now? Well, sort of home. So yeah, even though it's not explained to the last minute, you can't go through here either until this point, just because, well, Sadu blocked it with magic and stuff. Which helps to explain how the Imperials, even though there's more than one exit from this place, you know, why they just didn't come and take over that place either. Although they probably would have been hard pressed to succeed anyway.
Yeah, it would have really sucked if we left through this this area and we just got lost, you know. Like, we could have just come back the way we came, but... Um, outside of the House of the Fierce, which is completely surrounded with walls and we can't fly in here, now we have access to the northern half of the map. Finally. And thankfully, even though we still need to finish some... Uh, Aether Current quests. We're now finished with the Azim step, so soon enough we'll be able to actually fly there. Not that we have really much need to go back to that place, because again, the place just really kind of slogged on, and I did not like it. And before we go into this place, um, I haven't really done it just for the sake of time, but how I would fix that it, that that whole mess, because I feel that the pacing was just horrible. What I think they should have done instead was have the Ornier just learn of our plans to become warriors of the step and, you know, basically our grand plans to exploit their culture to get ourselves an army to liberate Doma. That, that's the whole point of this place. And they, as the rulers of the step, go, no, 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 no. You, you are smelly foreigners. What the hell do you think you're doing? No, 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 no. You want to do this? Fine. You come with us. You prove your worth as warriors. You prove that you're not doing any funky other smelly business outside behind that, beside this. You learn to respect our culture and have it be by his demand that we learn it and not so much just he and being like, oh, hey, let's go learn about their culture and stuff. And then, once we, you know, prove, you know, our respect and whatever for them, then, you know, have them go, okay, all right, all right, you're cool. Let's see, let's see if, if you can handle Barden's Metal. You can handle Barden's Metal and you're recognized in our sacred places, Warriors of the Step. Fine. Then you are free to go. And that would have just... I understand they had to place the dungeon where it did because, you know, they have to follow patterns and stuff like that. But the time between Barden's Metal and the Nodum just drags, drags on and not a single thing of the plot moves. Uh, as I described before, you know, the whole scene with Lee Sin Hien could have gone on much longer. The only thing you really have is Gosetsu, you know, just kind of having his own personal revelation about death in how the Dorthal handle their beliefs and and kind of, you know, explaining it and coming to terms with it on his own for his own purposes. But that's it. Like, the rest of it is just, like, how is this important to the narrative? Like, it's not entirely uninteresting information, but why the hell was it not regulated to side quests? Do they have nothing else to fill in there? So I just, like, by the time I got to this point in my first playthrough, I'm like, oh, thank God we're done with this place. Like, I know getting yourself an army isn't easy, but you already know your final object objective, like, five minutes after you walk into Reunion, and it takes forever for you to accomplish that with nothing Brothers else. Brothers and sisters, pray forgive me my absence. It has been far too long. Wait a second, is that the Aetherite right working? Gossetsu told us of your trials and tribulations on the steppe. Would that I had been present to witness your victory, my lord. Our victory, Yugiri, owed as much to each of my stalwart comrades as it did to me. Now rise. I will not suffer this excess of formality any longer. Yeah, we are friends here. Alfinol and Alize Levieux, I presume? I am told we owe you much. It is a pleasure to meet you both. The pleasure is ours, Lord Hien. Though we were born and raised a world apart, our values are one and the same. Freedom, justice, liberty. Each of which Doma shall soon enjoy once more. You totally just prepared that speech, didn't you? Hopefully. I understand you have brought an army. Indeed. The Zayla tribes of the Azim Steppe have pledged their military might to the cause. Good. We, meanwhile, have secured the support of the Confederacy and a not insignificant number of your countrymen. What, you got the pirates to cooperate? I'm impressed. 
The Blue Kojin too have expressed a willingness to join the fight, provided you agree to certain trade agreements following the liberation of Doma. Did you get this in writing? The Shinobi will render what aid they can. However, Suino Sato refused to answer our call. So, did you speak to no your mom and dad then? What forces we have amassed far exceed my original expectations. You have my thanks. You should know that Xenos departed Doma not long after you left to find Lord Heian. We know not the reason why, but it would seem he was eager to return to Gear Abania. What? Have you heard anything from the Resistance? There hasn't been another attack, has there? Do we even have the long-distance phone calls to be able to tell that? Tataru assures me they are quite well. You need not worry. If anything, this turn of events would seem to be to our advantage. But there the good news ends. Yotsuyu retains her position as acting viceroy, and we have reports that the garrison at Doma Castle is preparing for a massive operation. Yeah, shame we didn't kill the woman when she was a sitting duck. We suspect that the Empire's attempt to eliminate you on the step may have been a prelude to a larger effort to purge the remaining pockets of resistance within Doma. The hour of reckoning is upon us. <laughs> the Han has spoken, and I, for one, am not inclined to argue. We can do this. We got this now. In this place, in this moment, I call upon you all. Twenty-five years of oppression, of tyranny, of shame. It ends with us. We will prevail. So hooray, the gang is all here again. And first thing is first. The eighth the right is now working. Girl, what are you doing all the way out here? Like, nobody is- is over here! Is it too warm and stuffy or something? I don't know. <laughs> well, I take it the guy, you know, who's our brilliant strategist, has probably got the plan. Why is everyone spread out across the room, you silly people? Alright, let's just finish this up real quick. Oops. Ah, dang it, I just accidentally skipped that line of dialogue. Ugh. Hold on. No, I don't want that. There we go. There, there. Now you can now you can see it on stream on screen. Ugh. I moved my hand and accidentally touched my the touchpad on my controller. So, yeah, him and Alize have actually been working on the Aetherite, and they're the ones who have actually got it fixed. And no, if even if you've returned before this point, you cannot see it fixed until this point. Uh, when you, you know, come back here again mid-last quests. So, yeah, um, how they did it, I don't know. Uh, Alize did say earlier, well, they have the parts, but how does one put together an Aetherite? And... Surprisingly, yes, they do have the knowledge to do this. I mean, that's how they got into the kind of studio at 11 years old is because they know about this kind of weirdo stuff. Um, how they were able to levitate this thing, I don't know. I don't know how the hell they construct aetherites and whatever. Um, 
But surprisingly, no one is ever really going to talk about this. Like, it's not really a big, you know, like, huge plot point or anything like that. But it would have been nice if you had, like, just some NPC, like, mention, you know, that... Yeah, that, you know, they were impressed a bunch of teenagers were able to fix this or something like that. Or we can even kind of exposit or even remind the players that, yes, they are freaking prodigies over here and stuff like that and how somebody should be impressed by this somewhere and it's such a disappointment that they're not because the game honestly really doesn't remind you often enough of basically their intelligence and and their upbringing and it's kind of important because otherwise it just seems they're two random teenagers who are off hell you know saving the world and whatever and are rebels against home and it's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that, and it just, it kind of sucks. Especially because their upbringing kind of explains a lot of their early game behavior and, you know, how much they've changed, and it just feels odd that it's not mentioned or at least reminded of more often, because it is something very, very often forgotten. But we're going to have to end things here. So, thank you for watching, my friends, and I shall see you next time, and we'll discuss our plan of attack for, well, what the hell we're gonna do to liberate Doma.